Media literacy has always been important, but the rise of social media has spread the responsibilities for the production, the dissemination and fact-checking of news much more broadly. Over the last decades, there has been an ongoing shift in the way people access news. A recent Reuters report found that the share of US respondents who said that they use social media as a source of news has increased from 27% to 42% over the last 10 years. In Germany, there was a similar increase from 18% to 32%. Traditional news sources, such as television, print, and radio, have seen their reach decline significantly over the same period. Media literacy has always been important, but the rise of social media has spread the responsibilities for the production, the dissemination, and fact-checking of news much more broadly. An important determinant of the trustworthiness of news is the extent to which the provider has an incentive to ensure accuracy. Traditional media outlets compete on many dimensions, but it is often thought that one of these is credibility. This has never been a foolproof system, but there's a sense that reputational concerns provide a check on the spread of misinformation. With social media, the original source of a news story can be more opaque, and a reputation for accuracy may be a weaker incentive for individual users. As far as the platforms are concerned, they have not been competing on the basis of news accuracy. In a 2019 interview with CNN, a Facebook executive said, we are not in the news business, we are in the social media business. So to the extent that misinformation drives user engagement, one could even argue that they face a disincentive when it comes to ensuring accuracy. Secondly, a defining feature of news on social media is that we are not just passive consumers. We are all potentially involved in dissemination through our decisions on when and what to share or retweet. This shifts responsibilities that were once confined to editorial teams at newspapers and in newsrooms to a much wider population, with little or no training in this area. And finally, another feature that distinguishes social media platforms is that they are more vulnerable to outside actors, intent on the coordinated spread of misinformation. A prominent example being the disinformation campaigns of the Internet Research Agency based in Russia. Some governments have decided to make society as a whole more resilient to the spread of misinformation by promoting media literacy training in schools. In Finland, media and digital literacy skills are embedded in the national curriculum and incorporated in the teaching of subjects ranging from mathematics to history. In Estonia, the government implemented a coordinated strategy to promote media literacy in the wake of a 2007 cyber attack on the country. Estonian public schools have taught media literacy since 2010 at all levels from kindergarten to high school. One could ask to what extent such policies are likely to be effective. A 2021 article by Penny Cook and co-authors considers three possible reasons why people share misinformation online. One, that they are confused about what is accurate. Two, that they value partisanship over accuracy, so will deliberately share information they know to be false. And three, that they are inattentive to accuracy. Users may instinctively evaluate content based on how their friends might perceive it or whether it will receive attention without thinking about whether it is likely to be true. The authors conducted a series of online experiments that provide evidence in favor of the third hypothesis. When respondents are primed to think about accuracy, their propensity to share false information declines. This can be seen as a positive sign for the efficacy of media literacy training. Spreading awareness about the importance of accuracy is likely to be easier than combating ignorance or partisanship. However, it should also be noted that media literacy training in schools only reaches a small share of the population. A 2019 study by Guess and co-authors found that respondents over the age of 65 were nearly seven times more likely to share misinformation 
than those aged between 18 and 29. Social media platforms have also implemented initiatives to combat misinformation. These include partnering with fact-checking websites, attaching warning notices to controversial information, and in extreme cases, deplatforming users who spread misinformation. The evidence on these approaches is mixed. Several studies have found that it is very hard to correct people's views by presenting them with accurate information after they have already been exposed to fake news. A 2022 study by Henri and co-authors considers the question of fact-checking information that is provided at the time when users are exposed to fake news. This corresponds, for example, to posts on Twitter that have warning labels and links to fact-checking information. The authors find that users are significantly less likely to share fake news if they are exposed to fact-checking information, even when the decision to access this information is voluntary. No. Even in democracies, some politicians actively seek to undermine trust in the media for political gain. Donald Trump is a notable example of this. The concept of alternative facts is arguably the antithesis of a desire for greater media literacy. In autocracies, media literacy arguably takes on a slightly different meaning. In a functioning democracy, we may assume that individuals are exposed to independent factual information, but also a lot of misinformation. Distinguishing between the two is a mark of media literacy. Under an autocratic regime, media literacy may require the ability to read between the lines of government propaganda.